Hello. This is the first video in a series on learning Chisel. This series is oriented at experienced hardware designers who are new to the Chisel language, but have already have a background in doing Verilog hardware design. In this video, we're going to talk about operating systems, the Scala build tool, building from the command line, the IntelliJ graphical tool, and some supporting tools. Reference code for this talk is available at the link shown below. As Chisel is based on Scala and the Java Virtual Machine, it will work on all major operating systems, but some other tools are required for a full development environment, such as a Verilog simulator, a waveform or VCD viewer, and a logic synthesis tool. Linux generally has the most uh, the most widely available open source tools. However, different tools are available depending on what your environment is. Windows users may want to look at e installing the Windows subsystem for Linux or WSL to get better support for some of these tools. The Scala build tool is the most common command line tool for, uh, for Scala. It runs off a configuration file called build.sbt. The Scala build file tells SBT how to find the Scala libraries, which versions of the libraries to use, and where your main class is located. This is an example of an SBT build file, as shown in my example project. The first thing is the Scala version. This generally isn't too important for us Chisel users, however some of the uh, Chisel libraries have dependencies on specific versions of Scala. This sets the Chisel language version. So this determines the major features uh, that will be available to you when you're doing your coding. And there have been significant changes in, in different versions of Chisel code. Note that by setting this to an older version, you can continue to code with an existing or older set of Chisel features and only upgrade at, the, at such time as it's convenient for you. Or you can lock this version throughout the life of a project. This string sets your project name. And down here you can add any additional library dependencies. In this case, this project has a dependency on arg parse for j for parsing the command line arguments which are sent to the run command. Finally, this sets your main class, which is the class that should be run when you run the SBT run command. The SBT com command line command line codes are fairly simple. So SBT compile compiles all the source code that's found underneath your source directories. SBT test will run all identified unit tests and the SBT run will normally compile and execute your program, but it is, is running whatever class is, defi is defined as your main class. I briefly want to show you some examples of using using these. So this shows the command line and here we will do spt compile to compile all our source. spt test will run all of our unit tests. So you, you see here that it's given me a list of all the text names of my tests as well as the results of how long it took to run the tests and the pass-fail status of each one. And then spt run. Here I'm surrounding the run command with quotes so that any arguments that I give to it are passed along with run uh, and not, uh, not processed by the spt tool. In this case, I can do run-width 14 to generate a 14-bit wide multiplier. And then it's put my output code in GenRTL. And I can see that it has generated something that is 14 bits wide. Okay, so I 
IntelliJ is a cross-platform IDE developed by JetBrains for the JVM family of languages, which includes Scala, and can be downloaded here. IntelliJ has a number of different panes, so a quick overview of IntelliJ shows these is the file browser, so you can use this to select your different files. This is the code editor where you would do, uh, you would create uh, and edit your code. And down here is the SPT shell and the various other commands. So, to take a quick view of the GUI, this is the same test code. So this shows my multiplier code, and you can see by hovering over, I can find information about various aspects of my design. If I go into my test class, I can click on the arrow to go run a single test, or I can choose the arrow at the top of the class to run all the tests in the class. Again, I can go into the SPP shell. I can compile directly from the shell. Um, and I can also ask access my version history through git and directly do git commit commands. Designing debug is really important enhanced by having a good set of supporting tools. GTT, GTK Wave is a VCD waveform viewer. It's useful for reviewing and debugging your test results. Icarus Verilog is a Verilog simulator. Verilog, a Verilator is a compiled Verilog simulator, which is often faster than the internal tool or Icarus, but takes a little bit more time to start up. And Yosis is a logic synthesis tool. If we go back to the GUI, in our test run directory, we'll see that for each test we have, we have, um, we have an output, and we can go, um, we can go run an external tool, or I could run an external tool if my window is big enough. So. Thank you for taking the time to watch this presentation.